Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. One of the other Flash videos I did yesterday evening was about the revelation that Nicola Sturgeon lied. That in itself, of course, is hardly new. But what Sturgeon has done is lied under oath. She was at the COVID inquiry. She was under oath to tell the truth. And she lied. Now that, of course, is perjury. If you are in an inquiry and you lie under oath, you are committing perjury. The maximum sentence of that is seven years. And given the seriousness of the whole thing, I think the police should now arrest her and charge her and try her and convict her. And the judge should impose a seven year sentence and hopefully without parole. There'll be no reduction. Make her serve each and every day. It would be fitting, I think. Because this woman sat there in that room and said that she handed over all relevant WhatsApps, made sure all relevant WhatsApps were officially recorded, you know, before they were destroyed. And then it turns out that she actually recorded none. So she lied. That is perjury. Let's have a look at the full story, see what's going on. I think it is clear that the culture of lying in the SNP is so ingrained in each and every one of them that they even lie knowingly under oath on the hope that they're going to get away with it. But when those lies are exposed, it must be investigated. It must be prosecuted. She sat there. She looked at the, into the faces of these people while under oath and lied, told deliberate untruths because she knew that the real truth would be devastating. And so for her, a lie was easier than telling the truth. But it's always the way. SNP lie. Nicola Sturgeon lies. It comes so easy to her. Lies are like breathing. Because never, ever must they ever get into the habit of ever telling the truth on anything in case one day they tell the wrong truth. So new Nicola Sturgeon WhatsApp riddle, as the Scottish government admits, none were transferred to the official system. The former SNP leader said anything relevant from informal messaging would still have been officially recorded after admitting destroying messages relating to the pandemic. These are crimes now. She's actually admitting crimes. Nicola Sturgeon's COVID WhatsApp scandal looks to have opened up again after evidence emerged that the Scottish Government did not hold any information relating to messages sent on the social media app by the former First Minister. The ex-SNP leader finally admitted to destroying evidence relating to the pandemic when she appeared at the UK COVID inquiry last month. That can carry a life sentence. She insisted any relevant information would have been passed on to the government's electronic records and document management system. However, new information suggests that nothing was passed to the executive. And if nothing was passed, then we know she's broken the law again, and not just the perjury. So she's destroyed evidence and she's perjured herself She's broken information law. She was saying that there was no decisions made on WhatsApp. And then Liz Lloyd comes on and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were making uh, decisions on WhatsApp and showed some of the decisions that were being made. Decisions that should have been on the official record and weren't. This is a perversion of justice as well. That, of course, also carries a life sentence. Why are the police not getting involved? Why is the, the, the leading expert or the, the you know, Scotland's top lawyer not issuing orders to have this woman arrested and questioned? Is it because she sits on the SNP cabinet of which Nicola Sturgeon was once leader? Is that why Nicola Sturgeon seems to be above the law? Is that why no one is prepared to prosecute her? It seems to be the case. Sam Taylor of the think tank These Islands have been just sorry, just as a tangent, of course, 
This was the UK COVID inquiry, not the Scottish COVID inquiry. So I wonder if this now comes under UK law and is therefore punishable by via Westminster and therefore English law. Be interesting to see that one. Anyway, Sam Taylor of the think tank These Islands have been battling the government to release the number of WhatsApp messages sent by Miss Sturgeon to the ERDM during the pandemic. He was finally told on Wednesday that the government held none. Not a single one. He'd asked for a monthly breakdown of WhatsApp sent or received by former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, which were transferred to the Scottish Government's ERDM system between January the 1st, 2020 to the present date. And after initially being told the government did not have that information, Mr Taylor appealed. And though it was not upheld, the government did confirm, under our duty to advise and assist, I confirm, I confirm the answer is zero. Nothing was put on that system. And she said all relevant stuff was a lie under oath at the inquiry that is perjury please arrest her please charge her please prosecute her please jail her please throw away the damn key reacting to the revelation mr taylor said for some time i've been asking how many of sturgeon's whatsapps are in scott gov's erdm system uh, and so today finally they confirm the number is zero they knew this all along, of course, but refused to say so until the pretense was untenable. And reacting to the Freedom of Information response, Scottish Labour East Renfrewshire candidate Blair McDougall said, Sturgeon's defence has been that all relevant WhatsApp messages were transferred to official records. The SNP government covered up the number of WhatsApp messages in response to an FOI request. Why? Because the number is zero. Zero messages were added to ERDM. Lies plied on lies. Is anyone at all surprised that Nicola Sturgeon opens her mouth and the truth fails to come out? No. She is a nasty, lying, untruthful, hideously sanctimonious, awful woman who cannot, must not, dare not tell the truth. Because for her, the truth would be disastrous. At the inquiry, Miss Sturgeon said her communication via informal messaging, messaging apps had been extremely limited. That also, of course, was a lie. And she added, I operated on the basis that I would ensure anything in communications of that description were otherwise recorded on the Scottish Government system. That was a lie. If there was anything of that nature, she's saying if, but we know there was. We've seen Liz Lloyd's conversations. So that also was a lie. Ms Sturgeon and the SNP were approached for comment, but comment came there none because they know that any comments they make will be seen for what they are, trying to pass the buck, trying to worm their weaselly little shitbag asses out of a deep, deep hole of their own digging because they know what they have done. They have lied. They have destroyed evidence. They have covered up the truth. They have perverted the course of justice and they are denying justice to the families of all those who died. Or, as some believe, and as the rumours are, families of those she and Freeman killed, allegedly. And that's why there's no records at all. Because she'd rather do four or five years for, you know, for a minor crime than the rest of her horrible, little, worthless life in prison for the mass murder of thousands of people. What an obnoxious little shart she is. And we all know, and that is her true testament, that is her true legacy. She is a piece of human excrement who lies and lies and lies again. Coming up. What's really great is I can just call her a liar. I don't even have to put allegedly. Nicola Sturgeon, you are a liar. You lie and you lie and you lie. You dare not tell the truth because she's a liar. You know, none of this, I have to protect myself allegedly. We now know she lies. Proven, proven liar. But why, we have to ask, is no one prosecuting her? Why is no one signing off and saying, OK, she needs to be arrested. She needs to be questioned. Let's drag her in. There's enough evidence now that she's committed a crime. 
It's because all her chums, all her chums are controlling the, the, the whole story. They're refusing. A woman who sits in the cabinet is refusing to sign off on this. The person who's responsible, and if it was anyone else, you can guarantee that would be done. That would be out. The police would be arresting them. But Dorothy Bain, her chum, is saying, no, I'm not allowing that. We're not going to prosecute Nicola. It doesn't matter what Nicola's done. She's not going to be prosecuted. Even if the evidence showed she'd gone out and murdered 47 children, I'm never going to sign off on that because she's my friend Nicola. And that's how corrupt the justice system is in Scotland. And that is why they want juryless trials. That is why they brought the, the, the head of law into the cabinet. That is why they have a single unified police force. They can control everything so that they can get away quite literally i think with murder thank you very much for watching do please hit the subscribe button ring the bell leave a like leave a comment please share the video and until next time stay safe stay well and i will speak to you later bye